Hello everybody and welcome in to episode number 72 of the Bible 2021 podcast. We are reading Hebrews chapter 8 today and our focus is on whether or not the Old Testament law is obsolete plus what heaven is like and what Jesus is doing there. Lots and lots of topics, so let's dive right in. Hebrews 8 is a fascinating Bible passage. It's short, though, and a bit difficult to understand. Some of the things we see in this short chapter is verse 2 and 3 kind of tells us what Jesus is doing in heaven. We talked about it yesterday, that Jesus is in the heavenly temple interceding for God's people. And maybe we get a little bit more information today in verses 2 and 3, which says, We have this kind of high priest, Jesus, who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle that was set up by the Lord and not man. So Jesus is ministering in the heavenly tabernacle in a deep place of authority, sitting down but interceding still, the work of a priest, a high priest. Some have called the Pope the highest priest, and that's far from correct. Jesus is the one and only highest priest, and his relational ministry for us and on behalf of us is still active, though his sacrificial ministry has ended. Second thing we see, verse 5 tells us a little bit about what heaven is like. Verse 5 says, These serve as a copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was warned when he was about to complete the tabernacle. For God said, Be careful that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. In other words, and you'll probably see this or hear this clearer when we read the whole chapter together, God gave Moses plans, very specific plans, to build a tabernacle on the earth. And that tabernacle was like a black and white picture of the beach compared to the heavenly reality, which is a bit like being at the beach. In other words, we can see some real clues as to what heaven is like, and especially what the heavenly tabernacle is like, by looking at the description God gives to Moses as to how to build the tabernacle, because the tabernacle in heaven uh, is a is the original, but God tells Moses how to build something of a facsimile, a far inferior facsimile, but something of a facsimile on earth. And you can read about that in Exodus 26 and 27. But our main focus of discussion today is brought up by the very last verse in the chapter. Let's read it and you listen out for that verse and think about what it might mean. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 in the Christian Standard Bible Now, the main point of what is being said is this. We have this kind of high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary in the true tabernacle that was set up by the Lord and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it was necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he wouldn't be a priest since there are those offerings, the gifts prescribed by the law. These serve as a copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was warned when he was about to complete the tabernacle. For God said, Be careful that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. But Jesus has now obtained a superior ministry, and to that degree he is the mediator of a better covenant, which has been established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion for a second one. But finding fault with his people, he says, See, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. I show no concern for them, says the Lord, because they did not continue in my covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And each person will not teach his fellow citizen and each his brother and sister, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least to the greatest of them, for I will forgive their wrongdoing, and I will never again remember their sins. By saying a new covenant... He has declared that the first is obsolete, and what is obsolete in growing old is about to pass away. So here is our verse of the day. It's Hebrews 8, verse 13. By saying a new covenant, 
He, that's speaking of Jesus, has declared that the first is obsolete, and what is obsolete and growing old is about to pass away. My friends, that is an interesting verse, most interesting, in fact, and fairly highly debated. It's, is it saying that the Old Covenant, the law of the Old Testament, is obsolete? I believe that's what it's saying, at least for Gentiles, and I believe that this is the entire focus of the Jerusalem Council that we read about in Acts chapter 15. Should Gentile converts, aka non-Jewish Christians, like almost everybody listening to this, be required to follow the Old Testament? No, said the apostles, but they must not eat strangled things or eat blood or commit sexual immorality or partake of anything polluted my idols. I believe this means that the Old Testament is obsolete. I say that is not my word. I'm quoting the Hebrews word there. It's obsolete for Gentile Christians. Now, here are some other passages that seem to back that up. For instance, Luke twenty two twenty says, in the same way, Jesus also took the cup after the supper and said, this cup is the new covenant established by my blood. It is shed for you. Now, that, I believe, is what verse 13 is referring to when it says, by saying a new covenant. In other words, in other words when Jesus said in the last supper, a new covenant, he's saying that the first is obsolete. How about Galatians 3.23? Paul says, before this faith came, we were confined under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith was revealed. The law then was our guardian until Christ, so that we could be justified by faith. But since that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Well, I think what Paul said there very clearly is we're not under the guardian of the law anymore. Romans 6, 14, for sin will not rule over you because you are not under law, but under grace. Romans 15, 4, for whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. So you kind of sum all that up and there's other verses too, but you know, it's only a 10 minute podcast. We can't go too deep. This tells us that the Old Testament is good. It encourages us. It instructs us, but we are not under the law. The Old Testament was not written to Gentile Christians, i.e. non-Jews, but it was written to the Jewish people. Yes, we are grafted into the Jewish people, but we are not under the rules of the Old Testament, according to what I read in the scripture there and other passages too. There's a new agreement. There's a new covenant. The old is obsolete. It has been fulfilled in Jesus and has passed away. Now, one strong objection that I've heard to the view I just articulated to you is mentioned along with what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17 through 19. This is what Jesus says. Don't think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, let me say up front, that's a strong objection, no doubt about it. Read one way, it appears that Jesus is saying that the whole of the law of the Old Testament commands are in force and binding on humans. Not the least letter or stroke of a pen is passed away. But we need to remember this was said before his crucifixion and resurrection. But if we believe that Jesus is saying every single command of the Old Testament, even the small ones, are still in force now, then literally every Christian alive would be in big trouble because no Christian today teaches people to obey the whole law, every Old Testament command. What do I mean by that? Well, for instance, if we obeyed every Old Testament command, then we would not be able to wear clothes made of blended fab fibers like cotton and polyester. We would have to kill an animal for every firstborn son we would have. We would have to call a priest when we had mold in our home. 
We would not be able to use more than one kind of seed in our fields. So if you have a garden that is growing tomatoes and literally anything else, then you are breaking Old Testament commands. And finally, all of us must have tassels on the four corners of our outer garments. Now, there's hundreds more. Well, there's dozens more of commands like that. And those commands were good. There were reasons for them, and they were apropos for the people they were written to and the time they were written to for the Hebrews. But I believe, it's not my opinion, but I believe the clear teaching of the New Testament is that those commands are no longer binding for Gentile believers in Jesus. And when Jesus is speaking of all things being accomplished, I believe he is speaking of his crucifixion and resurrection as accomplishing all those things. In other words, he's saying these commands of the Old Testament are in effect until I have accomplished all the things by giving my life on the cross and being raised from the dead. Now, if that interpretation is not correct, then brothers and sisters, we are still under every single Old Testament command, and it just seems like that the New Testament teaches otherwise. We are not under the Old Covenant slash New Covenant, but the New Covenant slash New Testament. Now, a 10-minute podcast is not the place for such a weighty discussion. So, might I suggest a book like Five Views on Law and Gospel by Kaiser Mu, Bonson, etc. for a deeper dive into the topic, or better yet, come to the website, Bible2021.com, read through the verses mentioned above, especially Acts 15, and research the deeper context around them in Scripture to get a deep look at what the Bible teaches. Well, let's end the show with our verse of the month for March, Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through him, since he always lives to intercede for them. Amen. Good day to you, friends, and Godspeed.